May it please the court, I'm Joshua Gordon. I represent Alan Lathrop, who's here this afternoon, and he lives in a private lake community in Lake Winnipesaukee. The result the state urges here was explicitly rejected by the legislature. It had the example of Massachusetts before it, uh, at which at the time this statute was written, prohibited Dewey on private roads, whether defined as physical or legal access. It also had several examples um, which prohibit DUE everywhere within the state. But the New Hampshire legislature chose a more limited scope. A landowner can drive on their driveway um, in whatever condition they like on their own driveway. And by applying the DUE laws only on roads open for public use or closed to the general public, the legislature gave the landowner authority to determine which, uh, which private roads the law applies to. Can I just ask this question, Mr. Sure. Gordon? Why, I, and I'm, I don't think, I'm, I'm sure that neither side really argued this, but as I read the statute, why isn't this a way uh, because it was laid out under authority of a statute? It and, wasn't laid out under well, authority of a statute. Well, it wasn't laid out under the, uh, I guess what I'm thinking in terms of a statute is the, the zoning and planning laws of the community. In other words, if there's a if if this is a if this if this lake subdivision is laid out pursuant to the zoning laws uh, that apply to you know subdivisions, isn't yeah. that a isn't that a, stat, a statutory layout? The the, the, uh, the the only facts that are in the record on this are that it was the development was built around 1970. The date specific date wasn't given. I have no idea whether Wolfboro excuse me Moultonboro had um, had zoning at that time or what the issues are. I would be happy to have you decide on that issue because the state didn't prove any of that. Um, but it's, uh, I, I think generally uh, there's something in the record somewhere that says it wasn't laid out pursuant to a statute. Do mail, How delivery, it was laid out, I don't know. Do mail delivery trucks, UPS, FedEx access this road? Yes, they can. Are they guests? They're guests. How can they be guests? I think of guests as someone like you that I say, please come visit me at my house. Not necessarily the postman who shows up every day. Well, the postman won't come to Mr. Lathrop's house uh, for a variety of reasons, but UPS, for instance, might. But he, they're an invitee. Uh, but a guest and an invitee are not necessarily the same thing. Well, well, let's go with In, guests. Invitee is a broader category, wouldn't you agree? The sign says guest. Yeah. And uh, you can tell the UPS man, I want my UPS deliveries, you know, at, at, at my post office box or at my place of work or wherever. I don't want them here. And the association can do that. And so the, the, insofar as they allow the UPS truck, then the UPS truck is a guest. Okay, so I'm lost. It's dark. I don't know where I am. I see the sign. I'm scared. I figure maybe there's somebody down there because it looks like it's probably a nice place who might be able to help me out. I'm not allowed to do that? Well, by tr turning onto the road, you are trespassing. But if someone's nice enough to give you directions, then you're a guest. But I don't become a guest till after I get there. You don't. What about the fact that the town plows and the police patrol these pri private, quote, private roads? The town plows by, uh, by, by niceness. There's, um, there, there, there's a political will to plow, but no obligation to plow. And that's but they're, made they're afraid the they'll get sued if they fail no. to plow and someone's <laughs> house burns down. Well, I, I think they're, the, the, the record says they were afraid they would get, it would be a political issue, not a, not a liability issue. Well, political issues and liability issues sometimes get wrapped up inside of each other. So if the community is happy to have the town use its roads for purposes that suit it, how can it be heard to argue that, well, it's private if we say it's private? Well, I'm not so sure that if the town, uh, excuse me, if the police fail to respond or something like that, that they would be liable. And that's, you know, under, under RSA uh, 664, 674.41, that's the statute that provides that, uh, that if you live on a private class six road, you can waive your right to emergency services. But those get recorded and signed and recorded, right? They were those, do. were those done in this instance? No, there was, there was, uh, there was no, there was no waiver in this case, but still it's not, all, it's not altogether clear whether in a private road that with the signs like those that the 
town has liability. Let's go trespassing again. Say I drive in there to make a cell phone call and I'm there for an hour. What, as a practical matter, what's going to happen to me? I'm sitting well, in my Tiguan, eating a sandwich and talking on the phone. It depends upon whose house you, you are parked in front of them and, and how they feel about your parking there, I suppose. If, it's, if, if you're Dick Cheney and the, and the, the you know, Occupy Winnipesaukee Street comes, you know, it might be a lot different than if, you're, than if you're sitting there on a cell phone. But nonetheless, you're a trespass. In, in order to find for your client, is it your position that we need to find that it's a driveway? That all the roads in the development are a driveway? I don't think so, but I think that's a convenient um, analog. And, and the, the issue, I think, is it's very clear that if my driveway is a dirt road uh, a half mile long uh, with just a mailbox out front, that's probably a driveway with or without signs like this. But if I live in an area where there is a shared driveway where there's two or three or four houses up there, you know, and, and maybe my driveway, because there's houses Maybe it still looks, maybe it's still unpaved and small, or maybe it gets bigger and wider and paved. How far off the, I'm sorry, go ahead. You, 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 th those conditions are, make it, this is an element where you have to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. And I think the, uh, the, the, the private driveway or the shared driveway is the gray area. But so, the, po the police don't patrol that kind of driveway. No, they don't. And they don't have to patrol this kind of driveway either, and which is why I, I suggested that the answer to the liability is not nearly so clear. Does, does the association uh, reimburse the town for the plowing? No. Uh, they pay for their own maintenance of the roads, but the plowing is paid for by, um, by, by taxes. But there's a case on point, uh, the name of which escapes me now, that says, I think it's Catalano, that says, uh, Plowing, plowing alone does not, is not evidence of maintenance of a road. That's right. How far, off, how far down the road was the vehicle when the accident occurred? Uh, my estimate is a uh, quarter mile, half mile. You couldn't see it. It was around a bend. I, so there's no visual. I take it that a number of people live on these private roads yes. once you enter uh, Wildwood. My question is, um, it, would it not be reasonable for the legislature to look at this situation and say, um, we have to protect the other residents. In other words, we have DWI laws to protect against terrible accidents. So if in this case your client had an accident that injured someone else who lived on one of these private roads, it strikes me that the logic, uh, the public policy reasons and the logic for the DWI laws have to apply in this situation to protect the other people who live on these private roads. I think it cuts both ways. Um, on the one hand, yes, that certainly makes some sense. On the other hand, there is a tradition in the state of driving your skidoo around your own, your own property in whatever condition you want to drive it around. And so the legislature chose this middle ground. If a road is open for public use or not closed to the general public, then the DWI laws apply. But if not, then they don't. But, so there's no protection then for the other residents in this, in this uh, development, this private community. There's no protection for not them so, as Honor. against DWI. I, I beg to differ. The, the, if, they, if the association took a vote and changed the signage, they sure could. They could. They could say they could have no sign at all. In which case, DUI laws would no doubt apply because this place looks like a. So they'd have to do it all or nothing. In other words, no, in order think... to protect themselves against drunk drivers, they'd have to open their roads for public use. So you say. Well, I think they could. They could put their. They could make their signs. They, they could formulate their signs in a way that they like. Law. You know. Uh, that they could say something like, traffic laws apply here, like some stores do, you know, uh, theft laws apply here, or something like that. Um, they could sign this in such a way that it's clear to a person coming there that all the laws apply there, not, you know, and not, not that the, 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 this, this makes but clear from that the they standpoint, don't apply. But from the standpoint of a co-resident here, that's not helpful if a DWI accident causes injury or death. 
It's not helpful at all, but this is the sign that this association in, in it, at its exercise of the privacy or the level of privacy it wanted that this association decided to erect. And so th this is, that, 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 that sign is clearly indicates that this road is closed to all comers. But it doesn't, say, it, it doesn't say trespassers will be prosecuted, so you would only have a civil trespass, is that correct? Well, if criminal. someone's warned once, then they can have a criminal right. trespass, of course. But as far as the sign goes, that's true. How many houses? How many houses? I, I don't know, and it's not in the record. I, I, can you just refresh my Was there something in the record about do the police routinely patrol in here? Do they drive cars through and routinely? I, they didn't use the word routinely. They said they do patrol. Okay, they, but so they do patrol. So, in, I mean, in that sense, it's open... It's not, only, it's not only open for plowing in the winter, but also open for police patrol, uh, for police patrol, as, uh, I mean, may, maybe not routinely, but at least, presumably if they said that, that means that they don't just go there to answer a call. Correct. All right. All right. So yeah. while your sign has arguably strong language, it doesn't actually prevent me from driving down the road, or Justice Hicks to make his phone call, or anybody who chooses to ignore it, right? Well, you're trespassing if you go there. Maybe. So if maybe, and if you if you go there, you know that you know that you're subject to those conditions. Well, wouldn't you have, as the state suggests, a stronger case if the folks who really didn't want anybody coming down there actually put a gate across their private road? Well, of course they would, and they can put a gate there. But the statute doesn't say gate, and if the legislature intended gate, they would say gated against public use, not open for public use, and. I, I, as a separation of powers matter, you know, gates are cumbersome, expensive. I, I'm not sure this court has the authority to say you have to put up a gate. Uh, but to the rights. extent that there's any ambiguity about this open for public use concept, isn't it, um, hasn't it been addressed uh, for the public policy reasons that Justice Conboy stated by the testimony at the legislature and from particularly the uh, Association of Police Chiefs and Chief Russell about um, why they wanted it, and they wanted it particularly to deal with this type of problem, didn't they? Right. Well, the, so I, doesn't that address the, isn't that the answer to the public policy argument you're making? Well, there's, there's two responses. One is some of that testimony was that someone is being pursued and they turn down a private road in order to avoid detection. And that doesn't, that, that, that the law just isn't that. If, if you know, there's, if, if, if someone's being pursued and they turn public, police can keep on pursuing them. The second issue is that um, is that those in in those testimony n never came up a road a road with a sign a sign such as this never came up and that, so presumably they were talking about private roads but not private roads with no trespassing do not come here you know whatever it says stop do not enter private road that's not in that testimony. So it's, it's not addressed by the, by the legislative history at all. So if instead of making a phone call, I needed a safe place to drink in Moultonboro, I could drive right up this road and have a couple of six packs, right? Are you an owner? Why does that make a difference? Because, oh, you're not, you're not inviting you, unless you walk. Well, but it's, not a, it's whether it's a way or not. Not who the owner is, not the status of the defendant. Well, it's the landowner who has the rights on the private land. I'm, I'm not sure anyone else does. But if they exercise that, doesn't it become a way? Am I immune from arrest? Don't well, worry. I don't, know. Don't, don't worry. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think you're not because you're not a landowner. And you are, you are not there for the... You're, you're as uninvited as everybody else. But that's what? only if the landowners decide to say, leave get out of here, or calling a tow truck. Arguably, if nobody e either notices or cares, because it's a nice car and he's not making a fuss, he's immune from uh, prosecution on that road. Well, I think that's only because he successfully found a dark place in the middle of the night, not because um, it's got nothing to do with his status as an owner. What about the Tardif case? I have a note to myself, and I'm, I'll confess that I don't quite understand my own note, but. Um, the state appears to argue that uh, the statute was amended, the way statute was amended, uh, to address so-called ways in trailer parks, which, right. which are analogous here. Which are now. 
Well, well Tardif obviously is dated, and, the, and the, the, the specific portion of the statute that it addressed uh, has been amended. But the statement that this court so made... Right, so right now, yeah. if you drive on a road in a trailer park, a private trailer park, it's a way for purposes of DWI. Yes, I think so. Okay. What about so the roads on Governor's it? Island? Yeah. I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm not familiar with it. I, 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 are they private or public? Do they have signs like this? I just don't know. I'm not going to give you an advisory opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so how is this distinguishable from roads in trailer park, par private trailer parks? The statute says so. It do, it's not the trailer, trailer park, park statute the, says so. The trailer parks are no longer governed on, under the open for public, uh, op open for public use portion of the statute. They're separate, separate portion of the statute. But Tardif did say that, um, uh, I'm not sure I can get the, the language precise, but Tardif said that, uh, that uh, if you, Tardif, Tardif said that, that, uh, that if, a, if, a, if a road is op uh, co common and open to the, pu open to the public, if it's not commonly open to the public or something like that, then it's not public. I, I, can't, I can't remember the, the, the words, but there is a, a line there, whether it's uh, dicta or not, uh, it, it's still a line there that makes clear that if a road is not generally useful to the public, then it's not a public road. 